now at nine. A barrage of lightning, just take a look, really sparking across the night sky in Manassas, Virginia. This is new video just into our newsroom as we track strong storms moving through the DMV. We're now in a flash flood warning in parts of Northern Virginia and watches for many parts of the DMV. That will continue until midnight. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. At nine, I'm Susan Tran. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Flanagan. There's also been significant hail really seen all across portions of the region that could cause damage. Take a listen to just how loud it was. Yeah, coming down really hard here. You can just hear the magnitude of that hail. That is ping pong sized hail. This is from a viewer in Boyd's, Maryland. That is in Montgomery County. Shot from inside a horse barn there. You can also see the wind just whipping the hail across. Let's get right to our chief meteorologist, Janessa Webb, and it has been such a busy night with all of that lightning and there was low visibility and all of that hail as well. Yeah, Janessa, we had a little bit of everything. How are we looking right now at the nine o'clock hour? Uh, we're not done with uh, the severe weather aspect of it. It's just now that it's dark, it has suppressed uh, some of the widespread hail that we dealt with uh, this afternoon. It's not going to allow that uh, because temperatures have gotten a little bit cooler, still dealing with a massive flood situation that hovers across uh, Northern Virginia. These storms, they have come together. Look how if I was to slow this batch of moisture down uh, from Orange County all the way into uh, the Woodbridge area, still dealing with a significant light uh, show that where lightning strikes over 800 are coming in at this hour. And so this is the moderate to torrential rain that's about to cross over the Potomac, but still highly impacting I-95 corridor and then coming together across Orange in parts of uh, Madison into Fauquier County. They have just expanded that flash flood warning now down towards uh, Culpeper as well. Here are some totals. Uh, the worst totals I've seen are across Warrington just to the north over five inches in that region. And so here's the expansion of the flash flood warning. That's important. That's going to be staying in place until midnight tonight. All these polygons uh, just basically show you the counties that are impacted. It stretches from Orange Virginia, most of Northern Virginia highly impacted is Manassas County uh, that is dealing with that warning. Flash flood watch will remain in place for Western Maryland down towards Northern Virginia until that midnight hour. Visibility, it's a big concern across that region right now. You only can see about a mile to two miles in front of you. After the cold front crosses our region, which it hasn't done so, uh, we are going to see a relief in all the severe weather and cooler temperatures headed our way. Have your Friday forecast coming up. All right, Janessa, we'll see you then. Thanks. Take a look at this. We're tracking storms. This is in Prince William County video showing lightning just popping up in Manassas, Virginia. So much lightning there. Really pretty dramatic. That's where we find DC News Now's Max Marcilla and Max lightning really not letting up at this hour. I know you're supposed to cover high school football out in Northern Virginia tonight, but that got postponed because of the weather. It, that was uh, it was a good thought for a little bit, but that lightning there is probably reason number one why we are instead in our car near Colgan High School and not on the gridiron watching a high school football opener. Uh, you saw some of the video earlier. That's really what it's been like here throughout the night. Those lightning strikes you can see here. This is what it looked like sitting in the parking lot waiting for the game. It went from a 30 minute delay and, you know, everyone out of the stadium to everyone should just get out period and that's really where we have been for the last couple of hours the rain here has slowed down it was really strong earlier as you see some video from a gas station where we found some uh, shelter underneath that awning the rain and the winds were heavier earlier they have slowed down just a bit but we are still in the car because we are still seeing a lot of lightning so we'll keep you updated here in Manassas with the latest on this severe weather situation. Just keep following Janessa, who has some great advice for people across the DMV dealing with this severe storm. And Max Marcella reporting live tonight uh, from Manassas, Virginia. Just take a look at this video here. This is really something else. 
Meanwhile, Woodbridge, Virginia lighting up the sky as well. This is from meteorologist Damon Matson. You know, Damon's always on the clock. Mm. This is out in his backyard. That is just a really incredible video there and this down is in a, Prince William County. Yeah, this is another angle and you can see the night sky completely dark except every second or two lightning hits and it was really reflective in what Janessa was showing us on the radar that her radar was just you know, pockmarked with so many lightning strikes. Yep. At one point, I think she said in Fauquier County, they saw 900. Yeah, this is incredible. It looks like a strobe light there just lighting up the night sky. Pretty incredible. All right, meanwhile, right now, airports in the DMV have ground stops in place uh, because of the storm. That includes DCA, Dulles, and BWI. Those are in effect until 930 tonight. Of course, we'll keep you updated with when those get lifted. And remember, you can always stay on top of these severe weather conditions, watches and warnings by downloading our free DC News Now app. That way you can get alerts sent right to your phone from your neighborhood. So you put in your city, your zip code, or your county, and then you're going to get those alerts on your phone. You can also find the details on our website. Just scan the QR code you see right there on your screen or go to dcnewsnow.com. So many heavy hearts throughout our community with the death of investigator Wayne David. The veteran DC officer was shot and killed while trying to retrieve a gun from a storm drain last night at a crime scene there in Northeast. Police Chief Pamela Smith really overcome with emotions as she talked about investigator David. Today, I want everyone to know that the members of the Metropolitan Police Department and this community, we are hurting. This is hard not only for investigator David's family, but it's also very, very hard for the members of the Metropolitan Police Department. Now, David was a 25 year veteran of the Metropolitan Police Department, joining the force in 1998. His fellow officers say that he will be remembered for the way he treated people, everyone, even those he arrested. Investigators are looking for this man you see right here on your screen. Take a look. They say he's the one who dropped the gun into that storm drain there on DC 295, then jumped onto the back of a random motorcycle and took off. MPD, FBI and ATF, they are now offering this $50,000 reward for information on this case. And condolences really pouring in from all across the country for investigator David's family and the police department he served so long for. Fellow officers have been paying tribute all day long. DC News Now's Mariel Carbone spoke with community members who really knew and loved him. It's a hole in your heart. For Loreline Gregory, the last 24 hours have felt unreal. Her longtime neighbor, MPD investigator Wayne David, killed in the line of duty. He left yesterday morning and said, you know, see you later, you know, hope you have a good day. And then by nightfall, he's gone. The reality, David, who spent years working in the gun recovery unit, died after a tossed gun he was trying to retrieve accidentally went off, hitting him. He's the guy getting the guns off the street and he gets it's taken out by a gun like a fluke, like this can't be really happening. A 25-year veteran on the force, David was a protector on the job. But Gregory says he wasn't just that way at work. You could often see him out here on his own. Um, repairing or power washing or doing something to improve the community. Big heart, big laugh. And Jerome, uh, who lived next door to David, yeah. along with his sister, yeah. Loreline, remembers him. having long debates with David, conversations that changed his perspective on policing. The more I put a face on that blue uniform, mm -hmm. I mean, police are just like the rest of us. They got a job to do. They got families to go back home to. As the community now says goodbye to a friend, colleague and father, his neighbors want the public to remember him as a man of honor. Loved his, his work. He loved being law enforcement. Well, meanwhile, that was our Mayor Carbone reporting. Officer Wayne David's death is impacting police departments all across the DMV. DC Police Union posting on X. Please send your prayers to his family and co-workers. We are all devastated at this incredible loss. And Ward 2 Council Member Brooke Pinto posting on X. My heart is with Officer David's family and colleagues. He is a true hero. Meanwhile, all new tonight in Maryland, Prince George's County Police are investigating a deadly shooting there. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg joining us live from Capitol Heights, Maryland. And Daniel, what is the latest on this investigation? Susan, uh, this is still a very active investigation here. You can see behind me 
Prince George's County Police are still on the scene investigating what happened. They say that that they were called here at about 4:45 p.m. this afternoon and found a man dead inside this Chinese restaurant, Oriental Express. They say that uh, there were some witnesses inside, although there was a language barrier. They said they spoke Mandarin Chinese, so they were working to try uh, to get an interpreter to interview those witnesses and get a better idea of what happened inside. We don't know if it was a, cus a customer or an employee or somebody else. Uh, the question was asked to police whether this was a robbery. They said they are investigating that possibility, um, but they did not have an answer for us today. Uh, we did talk with one neighbor who lives right across the street who frequents this area often. Here's what he had to say about the restaurant. It's a family run business, so you see them going out in the groups, like two or three of them. So, but I've never seen them outside, you know, of their home. And so as police are still here uh, trying to figure out what happened, uh, they say that this is an isolated incident. They believe they don't uh, believe that there is any danger to the public, but uh, this is a very ongoing investigation. We're live in Prince George's County. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. Meanwhile, the husband of a missing Northern Virginia mother appeared in court once again today. And Narash Bhatt waived his right to a preliminary hearing. He is charged with concealing his wife's body. Mopta Coffley Bhatt has not been seen in more than a month now. Our team inside court today said he walked in in an orange jumpsuit and shackles. Bot's defense argues that without a body, there's no probable cause. Supporters showed up in full support for the missing Manassas Park mother. I sit in my seat. I have my row. I stare at the back of his head. I would gladly look him in the eyes on behalf of his wife. And there's probably a whole bunch of people behind me that would love to look at Naresh Bot straight in the eyes. An immigration attorney has confirmed that Mamta's family is now here in the U.S. They flew here from Nepal. Mamta's mother and brother are now helping take care of the couple's one-year-old daughter. For the first time, we are hearing from D.C. Councilmember Treon Wyatt since police arrested him on bribery charges. Wyatt posting on his personal Instagram page, thanking his supporters for the love, and he says he's trying to stay focused on getting through this time. Accusations of stolen valor against Maryland Governor Wes Moore. The New York Times reporting Moore inaccurately claimed that he had been awarded a bronze star for his military service. Now, Moore responding at the time he was applying for a White House fellowship and he was responding about the bronze star, but never received the award. He was recommended, that is. It's given to service members who distinguish themselves through heroic service or achievement in combat. Now, Moore saying in a statement, quote, it was an honest mistake and I regret not making that correction.